define the indefinite integral. Okay, for our first one, we're doing indefinite integral of inverse tangent, straight up, no other function. So the question arises, okay, well, I have a choice for one of my functions, but what do I use for the other? So integration by parts, it's a lot of fumbling around the dark until you get a little bag of tricks. So for this case, the bag of tricks is going to give you, you're going to have to set one of your functions equal to 1 and the other one equal to the tan inverse of x, and then one of them picks up a dx. So let's think about what happens here. Well, if I'm using 1, taking the derivative of that, it's going to give me 0. That's not going to help us at all. So that's going to be the function that I want to take the integral of. So we're going to let dv be equal to 1 dx. That's going to force me to keep u as tan inverse of x. Now another reason we want u equal to tan inverse of x is if we do a little foreshadowing, its derivative is 1 over 1 plus x squared. If we have our dv as dx, its antiderivative is going to be x. So when that x hits the 1 over 1 plus x squared, that's looking like a function in the bottom with its derivative on top. And then that we can kill with a u substitution. So let's see what happens. So I'm going to have my u equal to inverse tangent. du is going to be 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. That's the rule for derivative of inverse tangent. Or if dv equals 1 dx, and so when I take the antiderivative, that's just going to give me v equals x. We go across and then up. So that's going to give me x inverse tangent x minus, and now we have our x over 1 plus x squared dx. As I noted, this is now just a u substitution. Okay, we'll use y since we're already using u for integration by parts. So y is 1 plus x squared, dy equals 2x dx, or dx equals dy over 2x. We substitute in. So we're going to have, make that a y since we're using y now. That's going to give me x over y. Then dx turns into dy over 2x. So the x's go away, the half goes in front, and I'm just left with dy over y. Its any derivative is natural log of absolute value of y. So we get to here, and then we just put in 1 plus x squared where I have y. We can lose the absolute value signs because if I take x squared, that gives me a number bigger than or equal to 0. And if I add 1 to it, that gives me a number bigger than or equal to 1. So the absolute value of that thing is always going to be just the number itself because it's always a positive number going in. So absolute value signs get thrown away, and I'm left with x tan inverse x minus a half natural log 1 plus x squared plus a constant. Of course, we check it. So really quick, just the product rule. So the x goes away, leaving with a tan inverse, plus x times derivative inverse tangent. 1 over 1 plus x squared. And then for my last term, with the natural log, the 1 plus x squared moves to the bottom. We take the derivative of this and put it on top. That's going to give me 2x over 1 plus x squared with a minus half in front. And that's perfect for eliminating the last two, leaving me with an inverse tan. So it checks. Let's look at another trig integral. I'm going to try x secant squared x dx. Now if you notice here, there are two really nice things happening at once. First, if I take the derivative of x, it goes down to 1, or just dx. And if I take the antiderivative of secant squared, that goes up nicely to tan x. And if you remember, tan x is something we have a formula for. So we want to let u be equal to x, because when we take the derivative, that will turn to du equal to dx. And I want to let dv be equal to secant squared x dx, because then that's going to mean when I take the antiderivative, we'll wind up with a tangent. Okay, so we set that up as I just said. And now the rule is go down the diagonal and then subtract off the product going up, integrated. So I have x tan x minus tan x dx. Looking up your formula, you're going to see that the antiderivative of tan x is just natural log absolute value of secant x plus a constant. So we get our answer here. Of course, let's review that. It's always good to review these things. You can never see these too many times. So how do we get the antiderivative of tangent? 
Well, tangent equals sine over cosine. If you notice, we're going to have a function on the bottom. Its derivative is minus sine, so the derivative is pretty much on top. So I'm going to let y be equal to cosine x, dy is equal to minus sine x dx, and then I can solve dx equals dy over minus sine x. I substitute in. That's going to give me the sine I started with. We're going to have a dy over minus sine x for our dx substitution, and then the cosine turns into a y, and you notice sines go away, and I'm left with a minus dy over y. Any derivative of dy over y is just natural log absolute value of y. Bringing the minus sign to the inside as an exponent turns that into absolute value of 1 over y, and now 1 over cosine is just equal to secant. So that's how I get this piece here. Of course, we always check our answer when we're done. So for the integration of by parts, let's go with that. So what's in the box? I take its derivative. x goes to 1, giving me tan x. Then we have x stays as it is. Derivative is tangent. is secant squared x. And then I have minus the derivative of this thing. We'll note derivative of natural log says put whatever's in the absolute value in the bottom. Forget about the absolute value signs if they're there. And then take the derivative of the bottom, which gives me secant times tangent. Secants go away, leaving me with a minus tangent, which will kill the very first term. So we're left with x secant squared x, and it checks out.